end of 2021, I ordered some film directly from the Mography, as it seemed to be cheaper to get it from them instead of from a UK reseller. However, upon checkout, it seemed that Lomography was also doing an offer. Based on how many rolls of film that you ordered, they gave you a free camera, and in my case, it was this. The Lomo Mod. Similar to the Constructor camera they released a few years before, it's a DIY kit to build your own camera. But what makes this one different other than it being 120 film, is that it comes with a liquid filled lens. This isn't something I would usually buy, it seems as I got it for free, I thought it would be an interesting fun little task to do. So uh, let's head on over to my desk and I'll uh, rearrange the camera so you can kind of see my attempts at trying to put this together. So there's, looks like there's two, Two manuals, I guess in this one is for how to fill the lens maybe, and how the lens works. Okay, so what else have we got? A, oh, okay, so that's the lens components. I'll have to put that to the side, have a look at that in a minute. And this is probably just a brochure of all of the best photos that people have been able to put together. There might even be a bit of history as well in there. Could be an interesting read to put together later on. It's two sixes, an 11, and two A9s and an A10. I think I might have went the wrong way around. I was meant to go on first. Other well, lots of things here. Yeah. The building of the camera was split up into three assembly parts. The film door, body and lens, and took about two or three hours to complete. The build was pretty straightforward for me, with really only one major hiccup, which uh, was completely my own fault for not kind of double checking the instructions. Um, and also thankfully didn't need to kind of disassemble too much uh, to replace that part. Amongst the box were coloured parts, which were alternate pieces of the camera. Though I only realised this later, and I couldn't go back without really fully disassembling large sections, and I wish there was an indicator in the manual for this knowing that I can actually replace and use those coloured parts instead of just using the black standard card. It took longer than expected as the battery on my camera actually ran out and I didn't realise. But anyway, here's the camera. The only thing that's left to do now is actually to fill the lens with liquid. As mentioned at the start of the video, and what's really the selling point of this camera, is the Sutton lens that it uses. So what is a Sutton lens? Well, all it really means is that instead of there being a centre glass element for focusing, it uses liquid instead. And Lomography, being Lomography, actually encourage you to experiment with different liquids. Though if you do, they do state that you should always dilute the liquid, as some can damage the plastic of the lens. However, as I've only got black and white film available to me, I'm just going to use kind of tap water. If you're using colour film, then I imagine this could actually be pretty fun camera to experiment with, you know, changing the different coloured liquids or different types of liquid. Now that that's done, let's head out. So I've uh, just loaded up the camera. Um, the one thing I have noticed overnight is that the um, the lens uh, has that got kind of a large bubble, which uh, wasn't there yesterday when I initially kind of put the uh, the liquid in. I actually did kind of eject the first kind of batch just to put some more through to see if that would kind of get rid of the um, the bubble, but it kind of it hasn't. So I don't know if that's just part of the, the design. 
Um, it's quite large as well, but I don't know how much that's actually going to kind of cover or the actual image circle. So, you know, the images that I create might even have just this large kind of bubble on the on the top. But again, I'm just kind of hoping that it doesn't. But then I guess if it does, it's kind of a nice quirky thing. I suppose that's part of the uh, the construction. So uh, I'll just have to continue on and uh, find out when I develop the images when we get back home later on. So let's continue on. I've had a few rolls put through the camera. Uh, the one thing I'm kind of worried about is the the window on the back, which allows you to kind of check that you're on the correct frame or not, because there's kind of no red plastic film. It's literally just a hole in the back. I imagine that's going to be a cause for a lot of light leaks. The film does seem to be quite tight when you're kind of loading it. So hopefully that might mitigate some of the light leaks, but just because of the fact that it literally is a hole, I have a feeling that's kind of going to be an issue. The loading of the film is a little bit finicky, uh, but once it's kind of properly loaded, it doesn't seem to be too bad. Kind of, it's pretty secure. Um, when I'm kind of comparing it to the Diana from my previous video, it's, it's definitely kind of holding the rolls better than that Diana does. The viewfinder, if it's classed as that, is probably the most annoying aspect of the the camera i suppose in that it's just a window it'll be interesting to know how accurate it is obviously it's not going to be completely accurate but um yeah let's uh, continue around and uh, see what else i can find Because of the, the camera you have to wind on automatically yourself, you have to be a bit more vigilant in reminding yourself to do that. Because if you forget, you might end up finding yourself taking multiple images on the same frame. So I've just got back from the coast and I've gone ahead and taken the film out of the camera straight away because I'm really excited actually and curious to know how the images are going to turn out and <laughs> if they have actually turned out at all. So what I'm going to do is go get my chemicals and developing equipment and go ahead and just develop it straight away. So I'll see you in a minute once I've finished developing them. You may notice that things look a little bit different. That's because it's actually been a couple of weeks since I developed a black and white film. But the reason being is because I went out again, but with colour film this time. Seeing as the camera has the feature to replace the liquids and the colour if wanted to, I thought I'd kind of do the camera justice and not really miss the opportunity to see what that feature does and how it does affect the, the colour and the kind of the shifts of, of the film. Um, there's a kind of a main, <laughs> there's a theme that you'll notice throughout uh, seeing the images, and that's uh, one of them is light leaks, and the other is some kind of focusing issues, which uh, I guess we can kind of talk about later as to my theories behind it. So let's move over to my screen where we can kind of look at the images together. 
So these are, I guess, my favourite ones or the ones that have kind of turned out well enough to showcase. So let's kind of go through them. Um, so this is the tap water, um, kind of looks as expected really from any kind of film camera. Not too bad, I guess, it's nothing special, just an interesting kind of car that I came across. So the next image is where we get into using um, different liquids other than uh, tap water. So I actually used uh, a, a green tea for this one, which I was kind of hoping that it would have shifted the colours like quite dramatically, but it, but it hasn't. It's um, very cloudy looking. Other than that, I, it just kind of looks like, I guess, like a blurry, hazy image. And this one is actually with um, water, but with blue uh, food colouring in it. So this is the, the green tea version uh, of the same scene. And another one of the beach, just mainly for the horizon colours, really, just to kind of see what that would kind of do. Um, so these images haven't had any kind of colour correction. Again, this is just straight scanning. And I think I might have increased some exposure on some of them because of how dark they were. So as mentioned earlier about the camera, and the things being out of focus. I built the camera in a way that I was under the assumption that things from two and a half meters to infinity would be in focus because you either have to pick that focusing distance or I think it's a meter to two and a half meters so you can't adjust it you have to choose either or when you're building the camera. So as I built the camera wanting the infinity really because the types of images that I do usually include infinity or they're not kind of too close. So then when I got the images back and then developed them myself also, and noticing that images were just completely out of focus, especially to infinity, I was a bit kind of confused. So I don't know if there's either an issue with my camera or I've just misunderstood the, the instructions, I'm not too sure. But the confusing thing, or even more confusing thing I suppose, is that using the the blue food colouring seems to have again increased uh, kind of the focusing sharpness or changed it in a way it's it's odd so the image on the left is a black and white one which I've done myself before going out and taking some more with the colour but uh, the reason why I've picked these two is because in terms of like kind of subject distance and um, things being distance within the frame they kind of have got all of those elements together so they've kind of got like a, a foreground and a midground, and obviously then in the distance was just obviously infinity. So the, the pillar on the black and white image is actually a similar distance away from me uh, with kind of the, I guess the second layer element within the color. So these kind of blue and pink um, slatted kind of barriers. That's actually a similar distance to if not the fir first pillar, definitely like the second pillar. And as you can see in the black and white, it's just completely out of focus. And obviously beyond that, basically anything in that black and white image is out of focus. But then on the right image with the blue food coloring, like the trees and the and the, um, the houses and lampposts, like I would class them as probably maybe not being 100% in focus, but you know they're they're pretty close. You know they're much sharper than like these kind of archways are. So I'm not too sure, like what what's going on really, because I haven't changed the camera. Nothing's been moved about or whatever um, since you know using the black and white film versus the the color. So to wrap things up, I guess the question is, is the camera worth it? Obviously you're unlikely to use this for serious client work and it's just a way of having a bit of fun. As we saw, the quality of the images weren't great with the majority being out of focus. However, I don't think you're really buying this camera for its amazing image quality and more about the experience of building something and having that uh, sense of achievement. I suppose the one thing I would have liked to have seen would have been some kind of focus mechanism which may have actually helped alleviate my focusing issues, though that may just be localised to my camera. Honestly, I'm probably not going to use the camera again, especially with the issues that mine has, 
But because it's made of cardboard, I know that I can just recycle the body. Maybe I'll even experiment with the lens in some way of being able to affix it to the front of my digital camera. Though I am curious uh, if maybe you've ever built one and what liquids and the results that you kind of got. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.